Boom. Boom. Let's Let knit a thing. thing. I've been meaning to tell you. You look amazing today. Are you going to record with me? You're going to stay? Show them your pretty new collar. Boy, oh, so pretty. You're so handsome. Now look what you started. <laughs> oh, hi. I'm Shannon, and this is Soxetra my podcast about knitting and sometimes sewing and sometimes needy vishlas named Sloan. Today is September 6th. I never tell you the date, but I happen to know it today. I never tell you the date because I never know the date. You can find me on Ravelry and Periscope Shannon Fisher and you can find me on Instagram as Shannon Mariah and there's a hummingbird right behind you it's gone now so this is episode 25 25 episodes of Sock Centra amazing and today I remembered to clean my lens before I started podcasting Last week we had a bit of a romantic flare, if you will, a romantic filter, aka my finger or face grease. I'm not quite sure what was on my lens, but um, I didn't notice until I started editing and I thought, I'm not doing this again. We'll just deal with it. So thanks everyone who was so encouraging about my finished object dance party in episode 24. <laughs> I recorded it after I recorded everything else. So had I known how ridiculous it was going to be, I maybe would have talked about it a bit after I inserted that clip. I knew it was going to be ridiculous, but I didn't think it was going to be quite that ridiculous. And I knew I wasn't a great dancer, but I didn't know... I was that not great. <laughs> oh dear, best not to know these things. That's okay, I had fun doing it. I had fun dancing all my finished objects for you. It was just so fun to have so many things to show you and I wanted to show you in a really fun way. So that's what we ended up doing. Uh, I hope you had a great Labor Day weekend. I had a good one. I don't totally remember every. I think I, we did some hiking and then I did some painting. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I did some painting. My friend Tassia is moving into a place and so we painted it before she moved in. And that was really fun because most of the group that was there was from our knit night. And then it was a couple of her other friends who don't knit. <clears throat> and so they had so many questions about knitting and us and how we met and how the group got started. And Lisa, who started the group on Meetup, was there. And so she was able to answer that question, <clears throat> which was fun to listen to because I had never heard how the group got started before. So our group is called Froggers Anonymous. And as you know, frogging is when you rip back as a knitter. And so we explained that to the Tassius friends who were there, who were non-knitters. And Lisa, who started the group, is a notorious frogger. She is very particular. She's very picky. She's meticulous. She does beautiful, beautiful work. And so she, the group is aptly named, considering that she named it. 
and we were laughing because I said, had I named the group, it would not have been called Froggers Anonymous. It would have been called, fuck it, it's fine. <laughs> and um, our friend Steve, who was there, who's part of our group, not my husband Steve, but Knitter Steve, who was there, I thought that was hilarious and thought that I would probably run a pretty large group had I started a group named that. <laughs> and I said, well, Lisa seems to be doing fine because we have people on the wait list every week. And it's just that there's a sect of fuck it, it's finers within the Froggers Anonymous group. There's not a... Did you get that out of your system? You good now? <laughs> What's happening with you? You're so serious all of a sudden. Oh, yes, I love you too. It was a great long weekend, and now it's Tuesday, and so it's back to work and back to school. Emma's an unschooler, so we kind of, we're always kind of doing and not doing school. Um, so the only thing that really changes is that because she's part of a program called Self Design is that I start doing the reporting. Um, so it feels a little bit more like school than, than it does when we're not having to do that recording. Um, but yeah, so we're back into the swing of things. I was already in my office today getting some work done. And I meant to record this episode yesterday, but I just, I had some sewing to do and we had a few other things to do, so I just never got to it. So here we are today. So that takes us right in to Shouty Shan. And um, if you're new here, welcome. Thanks for joining. Thanks for checking me out. If you're new here, Shouty Shan is a segment of my podcast where I talk about social justice is issues. I always, I think I have trouble saying the word issues every single week. It always comes out issues. Often we're dealing with a lot of the isms and this week, you know how Facebook has like um, memories, it, it shows you like from a year ago, from five years ago or whatever. Well the other morning <clears throat> it popped up with something that I had shared three years ago and I started reading it, it just like shared a, a blurb from it and I started reading it. And I was like, this is some good writing. And then I realized I had written it, <laughs> which is always kind of fun to realize. Because at the time when I write my stuff, I always think, oh, this is no good. It's mediocre. Anyone could have written this, whatever. And then it's not until I get some great distance from my writing do I realize, oh, hey, I can write. And it was a really interesting, at least I thought it was an interesting topic, and I thought maybe I'd share that with you today. So I'm going to read, actually I'm going to read a whole essay. So maybe I will put um, a note in the down bar, if phone lets me, I'll put a note in the down bar about where, can you need to sit, 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 hey, sit, good girl about where the knitting content gets started. So that if you're not interested in the shouty shan bit, then you can skip ahead. So the essay that I'm gonna share with you today is an essay that I wrote in response to a blog post that was written by a woman uh, that I completely disagreed with and actually made me feel really sad. And it's, I couldn't find it. It's no longer on the internet, I think because she got quite a bit of flack about it, but it was a woman who called herself Mrs. Hall, and I think her, her blog was of the same name, and it was an, an essay that she wrote, it was like FYI, it was called FYI, Dear Girls on Instagram, or something like that, and it was basically a post 
shaming girls for the way that they display themselves on social media. And she was talking about how, you know, because she has, I think she had four, has four sons or something, and she was saying how, how are her boys expected to control themselves, and, you know, if you're dressing like this, and I wouldn't want them to bring home a girl like you, and be a nice girl, be a modest girl, and basically I read it and was like, oh, ah, if my daughter read this, I would be devastated. And then I thought, actually, this is the message that we get as women all the time. So it's, my message is a message to teenage girls in response to Mrs. Hall's message. But reading it, I thought, it's really a message that all of us women could stand to hear because we get fed so much crappy stuff by society and the media that I thought this would be a nice little reminder that you are wonderful just as you are. So let's get started. Like I said, this is an essay that I wrote and it is, it's about rape culture and slut shaming and if you don't know what those things are, you can Google them and you can also let me know because I have a ton of great articles about it bookmarked that I could share with you and get you up to speed on those things. But this is on my blog that is now collecting dust um, because I don't seem to make very much time to write these days. This is on my blog which is at truthfully.ca and I named this um, sort of mirrored the name of her post which I can't completely remember the name of her post but it's called FYI if you're a teenage girl being slut shamed by Mrs. Hall. But really, this is FYI, if you're a woman being slut shamed by, say, society, which is all of us. I always tell Emma, there is no such thing as a slut. There's only women who like sex, who are made to feel badly about it. So here we go, here's the essay. I broke the cardinal rule and read the comments. This is how I know your teachers and moms in favor of Mrs. Hall's letter are making it part of family discussions and lessons on digital citizenship. I could cry knowing this. It's not your job to stop men from objectifying you. It's not a man's right to be pleased by you. And Mrs. Hall needs to consider having some very different conversations with her sons. Listen, all that essay does is feed female body shame. And you, milady, have nothing to be ashamed of. Even if you're one of the girls in a towel or a gasp not wearing a bra, I promise you, you've done nothing wrong. You've done what society has groomed you to do, or even better, what you want to do. Hopefully you're talking about this stuff with your parents and checking in about the kinds of pictures you're posting. The internet is full of fantastic people, but it's also riddled with creeps. And here's where it sort of like veers into being a message for not just teenage girls, but all women. You all won't always have control over who sees what you choose to share, so be mindful of that. But don't be ashamed of your desire to feel pretty. Your whole life, you'll be indirectly, and sometimes not so indirectly, taught that the most important thing you can be is pretty. The most, most important thing you can do is please men. You will get this message from TV shows, movies, song lyrics, commercials, your Uncle Bob, and sometimes your parents. Parents grew up on Earth, which resulted in internalized sexist beliefs. Even if we fight it, we are all, to some degree, brainwashed by the beauty myth that to be beautiful and to have worth, we must look and act a certain way. My own mother used to tell me I didn't look as pretty when I wear my hair up 
and suggested I try makeup in the years I went without. And I've talked to my daughter about her appearance in ways I'm not proud of, motivated by the desire for her to be attractive. Because being attractive equals success, right? No, but that's the default belief we must work so hard to fight. The media has great interest in making sure we all buy into the beauty myth. It keeps us throwing our money at magazines, face creams, diet programs, hair removal products, and salon visits. It keeps us believing that we are not and never will be enough. Instead of a writing a letter to you, Mrs. Hall could talk to her boys about their very natural sexual desires and how women's bodies may or may not make them feel. She could urge her sons to see women as people and not objects and to treat women with respect. She could explore the ways our world will groom them to believe that they deserve more as men, that worthwhile women are pure and modest, that women who dress in revealing clothing, flirt, have sex, are slutty and block worthy. You can bet your brawless boobies Mrs. Hall has not escaped the desire to be beautiful. She has well manicured hair, pierced ears, and painted eyelashes. She has no business shaming you for feeling the same pressures. What if Mrs. Hall instead taught her boys what it's like to grow up female and bombarded by these toxic messages? Imagine the potential for compassion and understanding to take root in her son's hearts and minds. Imagine how empowered they would be to affect change in their corner of the world. Imagine how motivated they might be to respect women, to be allies, and to demand equality. Instead, Mrs. Hall wasted energy and precious formative years teaching her boys that it's the responsibility of young women they encounter to not sexually stimulate her sons. She's teaching them they have no agency over their sexual desires and that their only recourse is to be shielded from female skin. She is teaching her sons to alienate girls with normal desires and to join in on slut shaming. Hello, rape culture. Ladies, if you look at my Instagram feed, you'll find oodles of similar selfies. Like you, I to try to prove to myself and the world that I'm pretty enough, skinny enough, smooth enough, modestly sexy enough to belong and to be successful. I have also bought into the message that my success is directly tied to my appearance. It's normal, almost inescapable, maybe completely inescapable. You and I, we have worth because we breathe. We have worth because we are human and take up space and have much to offer, the least of which being our appearance. No matter how hard we work to dismantle the beauty myth, we likely won't ever completely relax. And the moment we do, someone will look us up and down, pause at our choice in comfy shoes, unplucked eyebrows, flawed skin, just long enough to remind us of expected norms. So don't feel bad about your devotion to beauty, friend. Be aware of it. Be aware of its presence and power. Be aware that when you give way to the pressures of trying to become the perfect woman, you have no less worth. You don't need to run to your accounts and take down anything that makes it easy for your male friends to imagine you naked in your bedroom. That's a direct quote from Mrs. Hull's essay. There will be days that you feel stronger, and then, on those days, fuck the pressure. Spit in the face of the patriarchy. Let your mustache grow. Post that picture showcasing your double chin and your relaxed gut. Use the Instagram filter that doesn't hide your pockmarked skin, and wear those comfy shoes. On the days you feel strong enough, Reflect on the value you've been taught to place on being beautiful. Reflect on the power you give that ideal. And on those days, give beauty a little less power. Maybe by the time you're 38, 
like me or 41. The muscles you use to fight sexism and the beauty myths will be so defined you'll no longer post sultry selfies because you need to. You'll post those bad boys because you fucking want to. And because we booted Miss Hall off our self-love island, that day she tried to make us feel like dirty sluts. So that's Shouty Shan for this week. Just a reminder to all my gal pals out there, you are enough just as you are with your mustache and your flawed skin and your imperfect hair and your big belly and your thick ankles. You are enough just as you are and uh, I love you and I see you. This takes us to finished objects. Sloane, you want to model those for me? Sloane, you look wonderful in the Bradway shawl. But I'm not going to lie. It looks way better on me than it does on Sloane. Sorry, girl. Truth hurts. So, yes, it's finished and blocked and dry. And I love it. And I've been wearing it around and been getting some fun compliments on it. So fun to say, oh yes, I did make this. I really, really love how it turned out. I love the colors that I chose. I love the combination. I love how it sits. It is a little bit scratchy. Um, it, it softened up a bit, bit with the Eucalan wash, but I think maybe next time I block it or wash it. I'm going to give it a conditioner bath. I did some reading up on the internet about how to do that so I think I have a pretty good idea and I am hopeful that that will soften it up even more. I don't actually mind the scratchiness but um, I guess after about an hour of wearing it I can start to feel like oh yeah I kind of want to take this off. So I think it would just be nice to make it so that having it on for prolonged periods of time doesn't bug me. But yeah, it, it's great and I love it. And I thought, I think I talked about this flaw. I can't remember. I've been periscoping a lot lately, so I can't remember if I showed this flaw to you or to my periscope pals. But um, I was telling them that I left this in. I actually, <laughs> Sloan, stop it. <laughs> stop. Sit. I accidentally purled when I should have been knitting to make this garter stitch and I got halfway through and realized that I had been purling when I should have been knitting and so then I thought well I'm just gonna do what I'm supposed to be doing the rest of the way there so I've got this one side just down at the bottom here where it's stocking at stitch for three rows so it broke up the garter stitch. And I thought when I wore it, I thought, ah, that's probably gonna be all that I notice. But um, true to my group name, fuck it, it's fine. I left it and it is fine. <laughs> it's not been silly. Um, But part of the reason I was, this is what I was telling my Periscope pals, part of the reason I left it in is because my friend Lily, whom I love and whom is very knit worthy, had just said to me, hey, will you knit me something? And so as I was finishing this up, I thought, oh, I bet Lily would love this. But I have made three shawls now, three shawls, three and four, and I've given them all away. Um, I made the Tailwinds, among the Shadows, Nina's, uh, Budding Bluebells, is there one more? Anyways, I've made at least three shawls and I have none to speak of. So I thought if I leave this big mistake in, which I call personality, it's not a mistake, if I leave this personality in it, I will probably be more likely to keep it because I would be afraid that if I gave it to Lily, someone who she knows who knits would see it and be like wow your your friend can't can't really follow a pattern can she <laughs> so it forced me to keep it and it worked 
I've kept it so far. So I'm gonna have to find something else to make Lily, which is fine. I think I'm gonna make her some fingerless mittens. I found some that I really like. So yes, this is my breathing space and I love it. I, some people didn't like the size of it. Like my friend Tassia made this and gave it to her mom because she wished that it had been a lot bigger, but I really love it. I love the size of it. It's, it's a, like probably about three inches on either side longer than my wingspan. Soon you are becoming obnoxious. There you go. So you can't see, but it goes past my fingers about three inches on, on each side. <laughs> we could snuggle together. That's the extent of my finished objects this week. I don't have four like I did last week. I just have the one. But that's five things I finished in August, which I think is like a record for me. I don't think I've finished five things in one month ever. Or maybe back when I was knitting just toques, but even then I don't think so. So that takes us to works in progress and Right now, the only work in progress I really have is my Campside Cardi by Alicia Plummer, and that is ticking along nicely. I can't remember if I had started that when I, in episode 24, I don't think I had actually. So I am on the sleeves. As you can see, I've done the body, the yoke and the body, and I did the edging. I went on Periscope and did an emergency um, Periscope to ask what people thought I should do because what I had, I didn't realize that there was three different needle sizes for this pattern. There's um, 5.0 millimeter, which you knit the yoke in, and then there you're supposed to knit the rest of the body in 5.5 millimeter. And then you're supposed to do the bottom ribbing in four millimeter, which I didn't notice the four millimeter. So I did the bottom ribbing in the five millimeter and then realized once I got to do, got to the edging, I read more closely and saw that I was supposed to do the edging in four millimeter and, and I had messed up that edging. So I, I knew I wasn't going to rip back that edging because fuck it, it's fine. Um, but I, I wondered if I should then maybe do this edging in four or if I should do it in five like I did in the bottom. Now a lot of people, most people I would say thought I should do it in the five. But a few people thought I should do it in the four. So what I did was I went through a bunch of projects on Ravelry to see what people had done and I noticed that everyone had done it in the four and um, I thought even if they had accidentally did what I did even if I had done this in the four it wouldn't ch it wouldn't really change the length of the cardigan hey, you want some? Yeah. So, come on. Come for a walk Sloan has left us to go for a walk now. So where was I? I chose to do it in the four millimeters. And it has indeed bunched up the cardigan a lot. Like as you can see the bottom of the uh, edging is here and the bottom of the cardigan is here. So it needs to be blocked out quite aggressively but I could tell that everyone did have to block theirs out quite aggressively. So I'm hopeful that mine will be fine also. And if it isn't, then I guess I will just frog it out because that will be something that's easy to rip out because <clears throat> I won't have to pick up stitches or anything because I had to pick up stitches, pick up and knit. So I'll be able to just rip it out without 
um, having to worry about drop stitches. So that's frogging that I would be willing to do and easy enough to do after the fact. So that's what I decided. I was hoping that there would be like a unanimous vote about what I should do about it. And there wasn't, so I had to just make up my own damn mind. Which is what I did. So now I'm about, what would you say, four inches into the sleeves? Is that about four inches? I'm not very good at measurements, at guess estimation. I'm about four inches into the sleeves, and this fits quite large. I've got yarn everywhere because it's attached to the skein still, or the, the bow, the cake, and it fits quite large. Um, it fits large kind of everywhere. It's quite large across my back. Um, so I definitely could have knit the size down, but I'm okay with that. An oversized comfy cardi is kind of fun. And I think it's, now that I've started the decreases, it's less ridiculous. It was looking like a huge, huge sleeve, like one and a half times the size of my, the circumference of my arm. So it's lucky, looking a lot less ridiculous now. It's just like a nice a nice size. A nice size. I really don't like knitting sleeves. I'm not sure why. Because it's a lot like knitting socks. And I enjoy knitting socks. I actually do know why. My friend Bernadette from Wet Coast Wools hit the nail on the head. She says because you're knitting with the same yarn. Whereas when you knit socks you get to pick up brand new yarn. And yeah, I'm just like, I'm, I'm done. I'm over this yarn. I'm over it. I'm ready to move on. So, um, yeah, but I should, I should be able to fit, like I'm almost halfway, I'm almost to my elbow. I should be able to finish these by the end of the week for sure. And then have it blocked and ready by episode 26. And I would absolutely make this again. I would make it in a smaller size and I would use the right needles. What else would I do? Oh yeah, I said that I eliminated the fourth chart. Did I tell you that? I think I told you I was going to do that. I did, I eliminated the fourth chart, so it's it's much shorter. It just comes down to like the top of my butt, my like where my pants sit on my waist. And I don't think there's anything else I would do differently. This is Sweet Georgia. 100% super wash merino in the orchid colorway. And I love it. I love it. Are you still there? I just had to get out of my cardigan. I'm still here. I wanted to talk a little bit about what's on my radar, meaning the things I'm hoping to start knitting once I'm done that. I knew I had to like just focus on that, otherwise I will keep avoiding those sleeves. Once I've got those sleeves cast off, I want to talk about a couple of things I'm thinking of casting on. I'm super into cardigans now. It's all I want to knit. Because you know what I realized is I don't actually wear a lot of pullovers. I wear a ton of cardigans all the time, store-bought cardigans. So I thought, why don't I make myself some cardigans to replace my store-bought ones because that's what I gravitate towards in my closet. I have um, a sweater's worth amount of this yarn that I got from Fibers West back in, was that in March? Back in March from Humming Bee Farm and it is Canadian. It's grown by Canadian sheep processed by custom woolen mills. So it's a hundred percent it's a hundred percent Canadian project and it's a worsted weight. And it's this beautiful I don't know like chocolate brown color but I, I don't see a color on it. I don't think they named it. But I have 
a sweater's worth of the amount of this. I actually bought this with the Trillium cardigan in mind by Michelle Wang. It's like a hearty wooly wool, but it's not like it's a bit scratchy, but it's not super scratchy. You can feel the lanolin in it. I also have a sweater's worth amount of this, and this is Firecracker Heather by Knit Picks in their What's it called? I can't think of what it's called right now. Wool of the Andes. So I have a sweaters with amount of this. So the cardigans that I'm thinking of are Trillium, Shore by Carrie Bostick, Burnish by Amy Herzog, and Antler by Tin Can Knits. So I Pretty sure Trillium is for sure one of them. And then I can't really decide between the other three that I named. So I'm pretty sure this is going to be Trillium, but any one of those other three could be this Firecracker Heather. Any thoughts? Ideas? Opinions? Have you guys knit any of those cardigans and you want to share your wisdom or insight or warnings with me? Do tell. Either way, I'm super excited to get started on a new cardigan. The other thing I have on my radar <clears throat> is jelly rolls, which are shorty socks, ankle socks. I went through my fingering weight yarn yesterday because a lot of it was all over my office. So I was trying to organize that and get it off my desk because I knew I, had, I needed to use my desk today to work. So I ended up seeing all of my beautiful fingering weight yarn and a few of them inspired me. Well, actually all of them <laughs> inspired me and I thought, oh, I just want to get some new socks on the needles. So I came across this Hawthorn fingering in the, what's it called? Do they name it? They must. Park Rose. In Park Rose, and it's got, it looks very pink, but it's got some orange in it. It's got some really subtle orange bits in it. I'm not sure, like right there, can you see that? And so I came across this, which is, I believe it's Mad Tosh. It's Mad Tosh Neon Red. Mad Tosh Twist Light in Neon Red. And I, if you've been with me for a while, you remember that I started knitting my Tailwind shawl with this, but decided I wouldn't love it if I continued, so I frogged that. See, I do frog. I frogged that out and replaced it with the Vancouver Gray, I believe. And so I thought, so the jelly rolls have this fun bit where I think it's slip stitches, and so this other color pokes through amongst the stockingette stitch. And I thought it would be fun to have the this orange like have this be the main color and then have this orange like maybe an orange toe an orange cuff orange heel and then the slip stitches be poking through with this orange but maybe it's not contrasty enough I'm not sure in certain lights it looks super like oh yeah that would be like vibrant and crazy and in other lights it looks like you can't really tell the pink from the orange. A friend told me once to take a picture of it, your yarn, and put a black and white filter on it to see if it's contrasted enough. So maybe I'll try doing that. Anyways, jelly rolls. Have you knit them? Do you have opinions about them? I saw that Vanessa Kind from, what's her podcast called? Garage? My Happy Garage, something garage. Vanessa Kind started these. 
and got all the way past the heel and realized that they don't fit her. So well, that worried me a little bit, but I do love how the jelly rolls look. So I'm interested in knitting them, but I would be very discouraged to the point of tears if that happened to me. I am a faint of heart knitter. <laughs> I can't handle setbacks like that. So if you have knit them, let me know what you think. Good choice? Not a good choice? Would ya? Wouldn't ya? Huh? What do you think? And that takes us to some pod love. And this week, I would like to give pod love to my new friend, Nathan Taylor, from the podcast, The Sock Matician. Nathan and I got paired up in um, a swap run by Melissa from The Spicy Homemaker. And who did she have helping her organize it? I'm so sorry, I forget who she helped had helping her organize it. Um, but I got, they did a podcaster's swap and it was Christmas in July. So <laughs> the funny thing is, is what I sent him had absolutely zero to do with Christmas because I pretty sure I read the Christmas in July thing and I read the instructions and I read that you're supposed to include a handmade ornament. But by the time I went to assemble his gift, I had completely forgot, forgotten about that bit. So he got nothing Christmassy. Um, I was mostly focused on finding my most manly fabrics to make him a project bag because that's what I really wanted to do for him. So that's what I did. And he received it and I think he likes it. He said he likes it. I got an offer to stay with him if I'm ever in London. So I mean, he likes it enough that I could be a house guest. So now I have to go to London. Thank you for that offer, Nathan. I will hopefully take you up on that one day. Steve and I used to go to London for five years in a row. We went every year around May, June because Steve was a speaker at a conference that happened there. Actually, and I was a speaker one year at another conference. So for five years in a row, we were in London every single year. But we haven't been back for two, two years now. I think two years ago was the last time we went. So now we just need another reason to go. Maybe visiting Nathan and Katie. Those are pretty good reasons. So I thought it was very funny that Nathan and I got paired up because when I heard of Nathan, I had just done a, a Shetty Shan section on one of my episodes about grammar snobbery and basically about how grammar snobbery can basically silence groups who are already don't have much of a voice in our society. Um, and then I found Nathan, and Nathan has a section in his podcast uh, about grammar blunders and things that annoy him that people say and do in regards to grammar. So I thought <laughs> that was a very funny contrast and made it kind of hilarious that we got paired up. Um, and I love, I have really enjoyed getting to know Nathan through his podcast. I have loved exchanging the, um, we each wrote each other a little letter, so that was fun. And I've just really enjoyed my interactions with him. He's just a really lovely human being. So I'm really glad that we got paired up. Um, and I hope we stay friends. So I wanted to show you, so mostly I've either eaten or stashed away his package that he sent me. It was a really lovely, thoughtful package. And he did pay attention to the Christmas part of the package. And so he very, he special knit this up for me and it's a double knit Christmas ornament. I've never double knit a thing in my life. No idea if I ever will, but that's his shtick. 
Nathan is super into double knitting. He teaches double knitting. He's a double knitting guru, if you will. I hate that word, but I think that's what he is. Um, so this is fun and it's staying out so that I remember to put it on my tree because all of them, our ornaments are in our crawl space down in the dankness of that area. So I'm definitely not going down there before Christmas. So if I tuck it away somewhere, I will forget where I put it and forget to put it on our tree. So I have it sitting out as a reminder to put it on my tree. And it's so, it's just, it's so super adorable. I don't know. Maybe I'll have to come up with a fun ornament and send him a second package because it's kind of silly that I that I missed that bit of it when that was the whole point. But yeah, so if you haven't checked out Nathan's podcast, which I'm sure you have because he has like 6.2 billion subscribers, um, definitely go check it out. His, um, he tends to do around that one and a half, two hour mark. Uh, so settle in with some good juicy knitting um, when you're ready to check him out. He's in London, if I if I didn't mention that. He um, his partner is a Broadway musical producer, maybe something to do with that. Um, yeah. Anyways, he's lovely. Go check him out, Nathan. I adore you. I'm super glad we got paired up. Um, and you're great, even though you're a grammar snob. It's not too late to convert you. Remember, fuck it, it's fine. It applies to more than just knitting. I really like this yarn, Nathan. My second pod love goes out to my friend Andy from um, Andre Sue Knits. Now, again, I'm sure you've seen her podcast because she has 7.2 billion subscribers. And she's just the most lovely, wonderful, gentle, creative human being. She is, I, I, she's just lovely. Now, as you might guess, she sent me a thing. And if you know Andy at all, you probably know what thing it is that she sent me. A sock blank. I have never ever knit with a sock blank before. And you guys look, it's the Bride of Frankenstein. How cool is that? I'm gonna have a Bride of Frankenstein socks. Or I saw that Andy turned one of her sock blanks into a pillow. And I almost feel like this is too beautiful to knit up. But you know what? It's so long and I make shorty socks. So I could save like one section of it and make a small pillow and then use the rest to knit up into shorty socks. Either way, exciting. What a lovely thoughtful gift. Thank you, Andy. I love it. I can't wait to see how this knits up. That must be so fun for her too, to see how these knit up because you don't know what they're going to look like when you paint them. I bet Emma would love making these, actually. I bet Emma would really love making soft blanks. Maybe I'll show her, see what she thinks. So yeah, thanks for that, Andy. So again, if you haven't checked out her podcast, definitely do. If you haven't checked out her shop, do that as well. She is so talented. Andy, have you done a behind the scenes of you painting these? Because if you have, I've missed it. And if you haven't, why not? Because I find this stuff fascinating. That behind the scenes stuff is often my favorite part. Um, Laura from the Fawn Knits podcast just did a behind the scenes of her and her sister while her husband supervised <laughs> dying, dying, a dying session. And it was so fun. I, I loved watching it. Laura comes on my periscopes sometimes and I was like, please do a behind the scenes. And she's like, "Lo, I just did one. So I was super excited when she uploaded that. 
So yeah. Look at the salt lake. So thank you, Andy. I love you. I can't wait to squishy hug you for real in real life someday. And now for some viewer love. Well, I would like to give a shout out to Knit by Maggie on Ravelry, who is Maggie from Tennessee. I just wanted to say hi, Maggie. Hi, Maggie. Maggie is, uh, it's a legacy name in my family. Actually, Marguerite is a legacy name in my family. And my mom uh, is Marion Marguerite. And she hates the name Marguerite. So she didn't pass it down to me because she hates the name Marguerite. But she wished that she had thought of Maggie for short because she would have named me Shannon Maggie. She doesn't have quite the same ring as Shannon Mariah. Uh, Shannon and Mariah packs more of a punch when you're mad at me. But Shannon and Maggie, it's just not the same. So what happened is she named one of our cats Maggie. <laughs> so growing up, I had a cat named Maggie. So Maggie, hello to you. Please tell me what you think about those socks. Maggie, yay or nay? And I wanted to say hello to Nicole who is a viewer from Atlanta, Georgia. And I wanted to say hello to Nicole and I wanted to do a bit of a bat signal, put out a bit of a bat signal for her. Because she has been knitting happily away on her scrappy sock blanket and then she hit some hard times and, and was using it as therapy to get through some yucky business. And she ran out of minis. And she's not in a place right now where she can get any more. So she reached out to me to see if there's any swaps that she could be part of. And I said that there was, I'd have to look for them. I still haven't done that. So I'm asking for two things. I'm asking, actually I'm asking for three things. One, can you let me know of any swaps that you know of? Two, if you're willing to swap with her, can you please get in touch with me? And three, if you're willing to just give to her without any expectations of her returning the favor to you, please get in touch with me and I will send you her address so that you can just love upon her in the form of 10 gram balls of yarn. That would be amazing. Because I know when I first started, um, I put out the call to see if anyone was willing to give up some of their minis. If they had any bits and bobs to donate to me and I was flooded by your response. And so I thought, you know, I bet that this community who I have grown to love and know would be willing to do the same for a viewer who is in need. So if you are willing to just give Nicole some of your bits and bobs, then please be in touch with me and I will DM you her address and you can just send that, no strings attached. Totally fine if you want to do a swap instead. Uh, I will put you in touch with her in that case. Um, actually, maybe I'll start a thread for that. I'll start a thread for if you want to swap. And then if you just want to send to her, DM me and I'll DM you her address so you can send directly to her. Sound good? All that's left now is for me to announce the winners of the Calve tank top pattern and the Blanket Blitz Cal winners. So if you um, are just here for the main knitting content, then Thank you so much for joining us, and I will see you in episode 26, and I will see you on Instagram, and I will see you on Periscope. Winner love. So the winner of the Calve tank pattern was the 27th comment on my YouTube, uh, episode 24, um, and that is Nose in a Book USA. I think that's how you say her her 
user handle. So she says, your breathing space is awesome, but the linen top, the calvet, impressed me the most because of the drape. Did you see how it jiggled during the dance? I couldn't wait to hear what, would it, what it was made of. Uniform holes are definitely a design feature added by your choice of stitch. Personality is a good way to explain it too. Color choice for me would probably be two calm shades of blue. For you, why not a screaming clash of hot pink and red? I love it. Why didn't I think of that? Red body, pink edging. Um, this came to me in a vision as you were lamenting your choices. I think you were just in a gray phase, which is how the breathing space and the Calvet look on screen. Do they look gray to you? Hmm. Thank you, Nose in a Book USA. You won the Calvet pattern. If you send me your RAV name on RAV, I'm Shannon Fisher on Ravelry, send me your RAV name and I will make sure Jose gets your name to send you the pattern. We have uh, four winners of the Blanket Blitz Cow. Three people who will get, let's see if I can make sure you see these. Three people who will get Cora's Eclipse and Knits stitch markers. So we've got little kitties. Someone will win the, win the little kitties. Someone will win the little cupcakes. And someone will win, win this set of row counters. So those three winners are um, post number 23, and that was by Philippa, who is Philippa MC on Ravelry. Congrats, Philippa. Post number 147, um, who is Marcia, who is Nick Graham on Ravelry. Congrats, Marcia. And then number 36, uh, who is Lisa, 72 stitches on Ravelry. So congratulations, friends. I will be sending these out to, to you in the mail, and I promise not to take two months like I did for the last Blanket Blitz cow. Mina donated a copy of her um, pinwheel scrap blanket pattern, and the winner of that is number post number 157, and that's Helga from Iceland. From Iceland! And she is Helgar on Rav, so congratulations, Helga. I will make sure Mina gets your name, and you can get her scrappy pinwheel blanket. Very fun. Thanks so much for participating in that Cal, you guys. It's my favorite Cal. I'll probably start up the regular Cal again in about a month or so, because it's a Cal that I want to keep doing to inspire us to work on our blankets. I haven't picked up my blanket, I don't think, since June, so I really need a kick in the pants. But it's really fun and inspiring to see what you guys are doing with yours. So thanks. Thanks for participating. Thanks for sharing your stuff. Thanks for being excited about it. And then I just wanted to give you a quick reminder about the Canada Cal and remind you of the, the two prizes that I have for that. I haven't told you already. I am going to send out a pattern uh, by Cassandra Rizzardi, who is Reason It's on Instagram, and she has the Reza After Dark um, podcast. And she's lovely. And what happened is she had asked me to test knit one of her patterns, her tank top. I think she only has one tank top. And I said yes, and it was all gung ho. And then she sent me the pattern and I just realized I was not going to have time for it. So I didn't end up doing it. And so I know it's probably pretty crummy for designers to send out patterns to people who they think are going to help them um, test edit their stuff, test their stuff, test their patterns, and then not follow through with that. So as a an apology I told her I said I want to buy one of your patterns and share it as a prize with my viewers so one of you will I was gonna just do the tank top but what I'll do is whoever wins that can just choose she has a bunch of beautiful patterns that you should go check out regardless of if you're 
participating or not. Um, so you'll win one of her patterns. It's your choice. And then the second thing that you can win is by uh, my friend Lorelei Erto. And she makes beautiful, stunning jewelry. I'm wearing one of her pieces right now. This is a really fun owl with some leaves and this fun chain that I love. I love it. I love it. I love everything she makes. I love everything she makes, you guys. It's all so beautiful. So she sent me this, and then she, but she, when she sent it, she also sent a prize for you. And I'm going to use it for the Canadian cap. I know I've shown it once before, but I just want to remind you. This came in this cute little box with owls on it. Her and I both love owls. And it is a pendant, a lot like mine. But it is a flower. And it's got a very similar chain, but this one has some leather bits on it. And these beautiful blue beads. So yes, it's very pretty. You will be a lucky duck to win that. So those are the two prizes I have right now. And I'm hoping to have a bag made. So there will be three prizes for the Canada Cow. I will also send one of my bags to a lucky winner. Socks etra extraordinaire. That's it. That's it for this week, guys. That's me. That's my knits and bits and bobs. Well, thanks for joining me. Thanks for always being so encouraging and upbeat and fun to hang out with and for leaving such wonderful feedback. Um, I love chatting with all of you. I love hanging out with you every week. Love getting to know you. Thanks for reaching out to me too. Uh, Nicole, I super appreciate that you thought of me when you're like, hey, I'm in a bind here. Um, I bet Shannon would be willing to help me because yes, uh, Sometimes all you can do for your people is show up for them. And so thanks for giving me the chance to show up for you. I really appreciate that. And hopefully, I am so certain that there will be some people who are just going to um, flood your life with some great minis. Thanks for joining me this week, you guys. I am thinking of you. I hope you're well and happy wherever you are. Big love and squishy hugs. <laughs> okay, you are not a bear, because if you are, you should be- Every time I say, are you still there? I want to say, are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. Do it do, do it do. I bet you left when Sloan left, didn't you? I have a meaning to tell you. Your hair is on fire. That would be a horrible thing not to tell you. You're the goopiest. No, you are. No, you are. Who cooks for you? <laughs>